when the backseat critics have got the power. You are now listening to the Backseat Critics, the movie review podcast. Welcome. Oh, you son of a... <laughs> <laughs> we are not doing that. You are not stealing my line. Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to the Backseat, backseat Critics. Critics. My, my name is Andrew. RJ. And Andrew, Andrew just Drew. messed up this whole <laughs> intro by peaking the sound. Congratulations. I'm turning it down. I'm turning it down. Settle down. Well, no, we probably got to restart. Thank you. Okay. Go again. Oh, people don't want to restart. They want it fresh. They want it fresh? They want to one take wonder. <laughs> okay. We well, ain't no two take Bob. <laughs> <laughs> they should see our edits. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I'm just saying oh, there's we're one a- take. One take? We're one, I mean, we one take when we add it from there. Okay. Do we not? Yes, we d- we do we do technically one take, but there's a lot of cuts. That's okay. It's still one take. All right, and we still have loyal listeners in Ireland. That's what really matters. <laughs> we love you, Ireland. Stay loyal. We will we'll do everything for you. Please subscribe to us, and please share us with your friends. We know the numbers. We know most of you aren't subscribed. So if you're not, go ahead, take a second, hit that subscribe button. You can or cannot hit the little bell if you want. That's up to you. That's your prerogative. But hit that subscribe. Yeah, you may or may not win a million dollars from hitting the subscribe. You never know. <laughs> you missed. Whoa. Whoa, wait. What? Whoa. Hey, who knows? Someone might win a million dollars by subscribing to the Backseat Critics. You might. You might. I never promised. Some exclusions may apply. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Somebody might win a million dollars by clicking subscribe. Who knows? We're, we're just saying it's more correlation, less causation. Monopoly money counts, right? <laughs> I don't have that much in Monopoly money. Let me check my wallet. Okay. Folks, he's pulling out his wallet. It's empty. I don't got it. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I need some more Monopoly money. <laughs> he's short two bucks. Son of a gun. That dang guy with the mustache is always <laughs> robbing me. <laughs> White haired, white haired mustache man mm-hmm. in the top hat mm-hmm. and the monocle mm-hmm. and the cane and the suit. Ooh. Monopoly, Monopoly. Anyways, we should at some point get to this movie. <laughs> yes, let's go to this movie The Great and Wonderful Masters of the Universe 1987 with Dolph Lundgren, Meg Foster, and Courtney Cox for some reason. And we got the power. Woo! What a decent movie. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've I have not seen this since junior high. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um I watched it in junior high. I remember enjoying it as a bad movie then, and I just haven't watched it since. And going back and rewatching it was kind of fun. It is a fun movie. There's no doubt about it. The costumes are ridiculous. Yes, they are. Everything is ridiculous in this movie. You watch it and you're like, why did they go live action? Right. Kind of wish they went animated. I'm not going to lie. They did Skeletor dirty. Oh, his costume was hot garbage. Dirty compared to like the Skeletor you see in the cartoon. I... I Always enjoyed like Skeletor's design, like legitimately enjoyed Skeletor's design. But this in the movie, hot garbage. Well, I think I found out where they got the uh, the costume for the Red Skull almost. Oh, from this? Yeah, think about yeah. it. Like in oh, you haven't seen that Avengers? Which one? Uh, the one Endgame. No, I haven't. Mm, they go to i stopped at a like age of ultron and i've seen like two after that okay so i'm gonna butcher this they go to voldemir the planet and the red skull's there and he's like floating he looks exactly like that but with a red skull instead whoa really yeah it's a, are, are, are we, red. <laughs> okay are, are we talking like early the first half skeletor or like final act where he's got like the gold crown and the the armor and stuff first half first half? he's got like the black cloak okay mm-hmm Okay. Is it time for the two-minute two minute drill? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you want to go for it? You can tag team it. Because I, I can, like, really simply do this. Skeletor tries to take over He-Man's planet. He-Man goes and finds this little flute thing with this little mi- mini guy. They do. Boop, 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 boop. Transport to Earth, and it's an hour and a half of chasing a MacGuffin, and... And Courtney Cox. Gets poisoned. Skeletor goes back to Castle Grayskull. Gets some fancy armor, and then we have a final fight scene, which they decide to put the cameras behind people. I got the power. I got the power. The most wooden acting, and then he kills Skeletor by throwing him down a chasm in a very Star Wars killing the Emperor. No electricity. No electricity. But he was shooting electricity like two minutes before then. And then movie ends. Movie ends, yep. Um, and then the police chief stays at home. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's he's played by the principal in uh, Back, Back to, to the Future. future. Mr. Yeah. Skinner. Yep. I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. I think it's Skinner. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember. Hmm. But that is the movie of Masters of the Universe. Yeah. It's it's really disappointing that like ninety percent of the movie is just like chasing a MacGuffin. Sure, but I, I mean, they, they, they make, I I get it. They I make the chase interesting at least. It's interesting. My favorite. Part, I know we're not talking scenes or anything yet. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this for when we talk scenes. Okay. Okay. But I do I do like they make the chase interesting because you have those. Those whack job characters, I think, that you can buy from, what's it called? The Halloween store that you see that takes oh, over. Oh, Spirit? The, yeah. Oh, what a messed up store. Right. It steals all the spirits of the old stores that live there. Anyways, I mean, for instance, we had Toys R Us here in Portland, Clackamas, Oregon. They stole the spirit of Toys R Us. It's gone. Gone. Jerks. Anyways, and there goes another. Uh, Sponsor? Yeah. I don't think Spirit sponsors people. <laughs> Not us, at least. Nope. <laughs> They're done. Hey, that's fine. I want my Spirit. Yeah, that's true. And I don't want you to take over my studio. Um, we we had like a little hovercrafts. We had some, you know, fights in a music store. Um, also, I don't know if you've ever seen the original cartoon. That short guy. Yes. The, the little proto Gimli. Yeah. He doesn't actually ever exist in the cartoons. His species doesn't exist in the cartoons. Made up for the movie. Didn't they make something up like that for the new the new one? Yes. For the new Netflix series? Yes. Okay. Yeah. After after the movie came out, um they started to add in that species and, and stuff. But like the like the OG He Man did not have that guy at all. Did not have that species at all. Okay, so that actor I know way too much about He Man. <laughs> they messed up about that actor. How so? Okay, first of all, you could have done a higher higher building actor build actor. You could have done Warwick Davis, obviously. That would have been my number one. Vern. Okay. Could have done Vern Mini Me. But I think what is a really good one is another actor with inside Willow. The movie Willow. Mm. Um, he is, I don't know the name off the top of my head as we work the Google machine. Uh, he is in Double Double Toil and Trouble. He's also known as like the top uh, top warrior inside Willow. Are we talking Val Kilmer? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's got like a deeper, raspier voice. And I think that would have made this character 10 times better, though, with Inside He-Man. Oh, yeah. No, this guy was like borderline. I'm talking that. Um, this guy was like borderline like a Jar Jar Binks kind of character. It it kind of felt like to me. He had the high, whiny voice. He was... I mean, let's be honest. We're terrible movie reviewers. We should be loving Jar Jar Binks. Why? Because he's always messing up. <laughs> That's true. And still making gold, just like how we always mess up. And yet Ireland still loves us. Um, not bashing on Jar Jar. I love Jar Jar, but but this guy was like clearly just like written as and as like the the butt of the joke for most of the movie. He's out there wearing disguises. He's wearing you know pimp hats and and horn rim sunglasses. He's hijacking cars at some point. 
Philip Fundarko. Fundarko. That is the guy that would have been a better actor. I think he plays Rumpelstiltskin in the Sabrina episode. Fun Darko. Fawn. Fawn. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. He would have been a better actor. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, where do you want to get started? You want to get scenes, sets, or... Yeah, scenes, sets, costumes. Uh, let's go costumes. Costumes? Costumes. Costumes. In the Costumes by RJ and Andrew. My number one. Wow, you dirty dog. We're getting all dirty in this episode today. We need a shower. Ooh. Um, so my number one. I know we talk trash on on him, but final form, final illusion, Skeletor. He's got the little gold bat wings. He's got the fangs. He's going all like the gold armor. Is this, I like it, how you it was call ultimate it, cheese. I like how you call it a final form. Like it's like Dragon Ball Z, like final form Frieza. And... <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, wasn't it? Was, what Dude was... gained some powers. He started shooting more electricity. What was He Man then like? God, God, He Man, or whatever. God, He Man. There's like a God Goku. Oh, uh, God form Goku or something like that. Wouldn't he be just He God? All I know is he's got the power. I've got the power. <laughs> God, he's so wooden in this. Yeah, Dolph doesn't say much in this. No, but I, I loved, I loved that that final form of Skeletor and just like how stupid that costume was. And the Goldar almost from Power Rangers. Exactly. Can you imagine exactly. Goldar? Goldar could have actually fit into this movie. And we're putting like he's got a mask on and he's got the helmet on over top of that. And that helmet is like too much. Like it's just it's way too much. It's wiggling around during the fight scene. It, it kind of turns into like you're fighting like a fighting a final boss. And then all yes. of a sudden you kill the boss. And you're like, I got you. And he's like. I'm not done yet. Yep. And, he's, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> Getting some like a uh, Joker from Arkham Asylum kind of vibes. Yeah. All of a sudden he pumps himself with the juice and. You're like, oh, okay, cool. We're not done yet. Nope. We got to do some more killing. Major missed opportunity. That entire fight scene. They're like filming behind the other person doing like weird over the shoulder shots as they're like sword fighting. That's like doing a John Wick movie while filming from behind a wall. Like. What are we doing? I know most of the most of the fighting was garbage in this. Yeah, it was very but, but sword fights, like you sit parallel to them, clean shot. Why why are we doing this from behind them and we just <laughs> we just get a look at their their back? It's because Andrew was sick that day for the filming and then they brought in Rob and Rob had to film it. Oh no. Or no wait, and Jamal had to do the sound for it, but it's oh, okay. No, <laughs> that's why the sound was so loud. Yeah, the sound of the the swords clashing. You know what? They that and the laser beams, outrageously loud compared to like all the dialogue. Yeah, no, it was one of those movies that you watched and you're like, I gotta turn up. Now I gotta turn, I turn down. down. Now I gotta turn back up. Yeah. So, where do I leave it? My number one costume. My number two is... It's going to be the little dude. Oh, really? Yes. Are we it's talking a... The Jar Jar Binks character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, wears a, he wears a costume partway through that, where he's got the, the horn rim sunglasses, the pimp hats, and, and like a, a sparkly gl- jacket. Are we talking that, or are we talking just his normal mm. do? I mean, I liked his normal do in the beginning. Okay. I just thought, you know, it's a fun little character. It reminds me, I mean... To make a good, bad movie, you have to have a character like this. 100%. And this is the staple character. Mm-hmm. You have to have some sort of crazy gremlin, goblin-looking guy. You have to have a doodle bop, but a good doodle bop. Yeah. And this is the doodle bop. Absolutely. Not there, there's sim- a part where his ears like pop up and he's shooting water out of his ears. Yes. It's fun. It's fun. If you have a little creature like this... Back in a 90s movie, you just made yourself a good, bad movie. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Still, bummer to have him, but... Yes. But I enjoyed but his... But one, one of the, the higher moments of the movie... What's your number two? <sighs> My number two. Let me see if I got this right. I would just like to point out, because she's not going to make my list, but did you notice the girl who's like the like he mans friend? Oh, yeah, yeah. She did like the whole Superman thing with the underwear outside of the tights. Yes. Yes. Did you notice that? I was like, like I sat there for a second. I was like, Huh. Okay. That th- she thinks she's like Superman. Mm-hmm. But with a thong. So I'm going to go with. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I you know what? Touch there's, that one. there's not. There's not many places to go from there. So my my number two, I'm going to go for a classic He-Man villain. Okay. Beast. Beast Man. I concur. I'd say number two. Yeah, I concur with that one. I He looks like Teen Wolf. Yep. Just Teen Wolf with a, a fat neck and, and wearing like overalls or something. Yeah. Running around with a gun. There was one part I loved where they ambushed He-Man right outside of the, um, the school. Yes. Or the auditorium. And he's like lunging at He-Man. And Dolph reacts way before uh the actor for beast man even touches him yes like he's just like oh like he's being hit but like beast man is nowhere near him pinnacle bad movie you got bad movie you gotta have a a bad mystery actor there we go we are teaching people how to write a good bad movie right now oh absolutely have messed up stunts yep hiccup on stunts and have a little character that is just just bonkers yes yeah just cool. again, watch a Roger Corman movie. That guy can make good bad movies all day. Rudy Ray Moore. What is what is that? This is the uh, number three. Ah. Fair. Third. Ooh. Costume on our list. Okay, cut me off here. All right. Well, we gotta continue, otherwise we're gonna lose Ireland. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you're gonna make me go. Hmm. I am going to go with the evil sorceress lady. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. Why? She... So another staple in bad movies. Well, not actually a staple, but uh, an enhancement in bad movies is having a crazy bad guy lady, I feel like. Okay. And her outfit kind of fit that. Wasn't she, didn't she wear just like a, a tight skin colored outfit with like a couple metal bits yeah. over her chest and then like down to her belly button? You know. Kind of a V shape. We we look at this, right? Okay. And I'm starting to think these people were like the inspiration to Power Rangers. You have the Goldar outfit. Mm-hmm. Now we have kind of a Rita Repulsa outfit. When was Power Rangers done? Mid 90s? Yeah. When was uh, the I mean, r- this isn't necessarily Rita Repulsa because she had the more of the Madonna look, but I'm just thinking this is like a villain that I could see in Power Rangers. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking up the original. Actually, a lot of the villains in this movie, I think you could see as Power Ranger villains. Absolutely. And while we're talking about villains, we're going to move to my number three. I think their name's... Sarod, the little lizard looking dude. Ah, okay, okay, okay. They they had they um, costume designers. Nice job on this. Nice job. They got a little like neck bit to like go up and down as he's breathing. It's nice detail. I actually applaud most of the costume designers for this movie, just for the it's sense. Not bad. They were basically like the cartoon characters for the most part, besides Skeletor. Mm-hmm. There's a lot made for the movie, though. Yeah. But, yeah, absolutely. They were basically just kind of true to form. Mm-hmm. Which was nice to see. 
Uh, except for Skeletor's army oddly looked like a knockoff version of Darth Vader with guns. Oh, I got space ball vibes with guns. Oh, you know what? Same thing. Space ball, Same space thing. Space ball helmet. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, Darth Vader? Or is that his troopers? I'm like, no. no space balls. I was like, wait a second. I suck. 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 I was sitting, sitting there on the couch. I was like, what's that smell? I was like, smell some space balls. I, sm- I smell Mel and the Brooks and a Sprice Balls. He's here. And then I looked on the TV. I was like, those are space ball characters. I can absolutely see that. They also look like Star Wars characters. 100%. They look like the, the engineer guys on the Death Star. Yes. Yes. Where they've got the little fan out and yeah. Yeah, mixed there's a the, lot of mix with the pilots. Yeah, mix mix those two together, and there you go. Skeletor army. There's a lot taken from other movies in here. From Star Wars, the opening titles are basically right out of Superman. From just the style and look, to also the song that they used was pretty close to the Superman theme. Yeah, not quite, but it, you were <laughs> they were dancing that line. You could hear it. You're just like. Uh huh. I actually paused a couple times. Did I click on the wrong movie? <laughs> like, why are they playing the flute? But yeah, the the, the, uh, the the people's names just zooming in and yeah, I think they're just trying to hit what was hot. Well, hey, smart. Yes. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. All right. Is you want to do scenes, scenes or sets? Let's do scenes. We're off to talk about C. What's happening? The magical wizard of scenes. I'm so confused. Everything. You want to go first? Sure. Cool. My favorite scene, and I, I'm an evil person. Oh God. I don't know why. I wonder if you chose the same scene. Is when the girl. Gets tricked to come outside. Oh no! You that, know, that's that's one of my top three. But you know the parents are dead. Yes, you know the parents are dead. Yes, and you sit. She there. sees her mom outside the the window while they're having a fight with sci-fi people, and she's seen basically magic. And she's like, "Oh, my mom must have come back from the dead and is waiting for me out in the alley and is like calling me to her." Oh, it gets better. What are you doing? This gets ten times better because she gets called out into the alley, and then she. She goes, hey, can you go grab me that special magical flute thing? Because the mom knows undercover. about the magical flute. Right. And she goes and she goes back inside, looks around and goes, yep. Takes it and runs. Yeah. This is after she's like, hey, guys, you won't believe it. My mom is alive and she needs this. See ya. Yep. What is she doing? And then she gives it to the villain and then the villain turns back into the evil sorceress princess and goes, ah! <laughs> and then they start shooting at her. Yep. I don't know why. That was one of the funniest parts in the movie to me. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm I'm up there with you. That is actually my number three. I'm an evil person. That that makes us bad. Hey, hey, you should hear my number one. Okay, let's get, let's get the number one. My number one is when they first discover the dev- the the device in the crater at the at the graveyard, and they see this little bleep blop crater with a little bleep blop device in there just bleep blopping away yeah and they're like cool let's go touch it and they're like oh it must be an instrument sitting in a massive crater synthesizer yes synthesizer and he's like i'm gonna hook this up to an amp and play it at my my like concert or whatever didn't they say it was japanese like a japanese synthesizer and I'm like, what are you doing? The thing looks like a little mini nuclear head and is in a crater. You know what I've been great? What are you doing? If they would have opened up one of the things on accident, on the one of the gates. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's points where there's like lights coming out of it and they're like, wow. And it's like, what are we doing? You guys don't even know what it does yet. It looks like a missile, like a little miniature n- missile. And you're like. You know what? I'm going to keep pushing buttons on it. You know what? A movie that's 10 times better. He accidentally opens up the gate and here comes Skeletor's army. 
hundred percent better movie. <laughs> that would have been something. And now S- He-Man's got to save Earth. Ooh. But he's got to sneak into Earth to save it. Better movie. Better movie. You know, if Skeletor just like gave up on Castle Grayskull. But he wouldn't. No. He had to stay true to his, his guy. Yeah. All right. Number Scene two. number two is when they're hiding out, doing a stakeout in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> One guy's got, what was it, KFC? Yeah. By the way, shout out to this movie with all the little sponsorships that they got in there. They had, I think I saw Pepsi. Coke? Yes. I definitely saw Coke. Yep. I saw the KFC. KFC was everywhere. Yes, KFC was everywhere. I th- thought I saw McDonald's. Probably. I thought I saw McDonald's. There Sorry, a, I'm still oh. like adjusting my mic. There's not like a comfortable height for me right now. But there was a lot of little things in there. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of little sponsorships. But I, I do like it when they're eating the chicken, hiding out in the bushes. I forgot where were they looking. They are staring at the synthesizer thingy, Mababa, weren't they? Um, No. So they, they had just come through a portal. They had seen a cow. And they all split up. They all split up, and this is where they just happen to go. And so they, three, they, they three of the four up. of them. They met back up, and they, one guy's eating chicken, and then everybody else is trying it, and they're like, "What is this?" And they're like, "Oh, this oh, is rude." Yep, and then they toss it to the side, and the one guy's like, "But it was good." The little character, he's like, "Oh, but it was good." <laughs> yeah, I wonder what they eat over there, right? And you could tell. The other guy has seen some stuff because he was like, oh, this is me. This is the rib boat. And it's just like, bro, you have seen some things. If these two don't like it because it's meat, but they're willing to eat it. Right. Like, I mean, he's he's a man of arms. So he's he's a, he's a warrior guy. But, but yeah, absolutely. Seen My favorite stuff. part about that scene is when uh, Proto Gimli shoots a little like uh, Gat- Gatling gun to get the KFC out of somebody's car. Yes. This guy is a little thief. He's steal he's stealing the KFC. He's jacking cars. He's stealing clothes. Like, come on, dude. Come on. Wait, what's the, what's his character's name again? I don't remember. I did write it down though. I just <laughs> I wrote Proto Gimli all over. I don't know his name. Okay, so that guy Well here's another better movie. Gwildor. Gwildor? Gwildor. Gwildor. Better better movie. Gwildor runs around just the town. No, Stealing no. KFC. Just let, like he's an alien, falls from the sky, running around town. Now that's a better movie. Improve on that. He's the only one in character. Everything else is just people on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're just, we're shooting gorilla style. Oh. Like a prank show. So kind of like Borat. Yes. That'd be great. He's the only one in character. He has to stay in character while sting all, stealing other people's food with a Gatling gun. No, that would be funny. Yeah, yeah, it would. All right, what's your number two? Uh, I was really hoping to avoid this. So why aren't you avoiding it? <laughs> here we are. I really want to avoid this, but here we are. We're talking <laughs> about scenes, and I got to drop this scene. Oh, man, there's number three. I know what my number three is, but I don't know what my number two is. We've already spoiled your number three. Mm-hmm. 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 Number two. My number two. I'm going to go... I'm, I'm going to go with the end. Is it when the Principal Skinner or whatever his name is on the, the bench? Or? You know, I was thinking about that. I want to be kind of all this out. <laughs> I mean, that's a good scene. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna go with it. There's like, there's like other good scenes, but like, none of them made me laugh quite like that one did. Just because it's like, what are you doing? It's pure comedy. Like he's just sitting up there. Yeah, he's he's already got like the robes on and stuff, and and some wizard lady by his side, and and he's uh, high up on the chair, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, saying he, oh, he's got his own castle. Is he taking over? Is he taking over Skeletor's castle? I think he is like. Vice president. Just thought. Spinoff movie idea. Him being vice president. Yes. This guy was doing his best at a Brooklyn accent. He wasn't that bad at it. He was. He was really like rubbing it up. Well, yeah. But I he mean, wasn't. He wasn't bad. He was just like obviously fake. For a bad movie, you gotta have that. 
You got to have a bad accent. Another yes. key to a bad movie. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay, we can call it an enhancement. It's an enhancement. We'll agree to that. Um, Dolph Lundgren's performance, though. That is key to a bad movie. A bad main actor. Yes. Yes. You need the side characters to be more interesting than the main. Yes. Number three for me. Once again, I'm an evil, evil person. And once again, it made me giggle on the inside. When He-Man's caught by Skeletor. Okay. And they take it to the ship. And his friends teleport with the... Like, he is sitting in front of the Skeletor, and they're, they're destroying the, the wizard lady. Okay. And now everyone's like, what wizard lady? But anyways, they're destroying the main wizard lady thing, person. And his friends arrive, and they start blasting guns, and everybody's shooting each other at each other, right? Mm-hmm. And he man turns and goes, I thought you weren't going to hurt my friends. I thought we made a promise. Skeletor looks and just, I lied. <laughs> you know what would have been better? If he would have done his Skeletor laugh. Ha 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 ha! Yes, if that was on there too. Yes, I'm so disappointed that they did not do like the Skeletor voice at all. Like they didn't even try. I mean, at least have like a laugh. Give me the laugh. That, I mean, that's like key to Skeletor. I feel like is a laugh. The laugh, but give me the voice. Yeah. You do the voice, you're getting the laugh. Yeah. And that that voice, that voice of aha, he man. I mean, you couldn't in that series of movie. I don't think you could do it. But give something. Give a high five somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been nice to see. Also, shout out to the scenes where Courtney Cox says it's her fault that her parents died in a plane crash, even though she was nowhere near there. And then she gets teleported back in time to before her parents died. Yeah, at the very end. Yes. And she's taking her dad's pilot keys. Like his airplane keys, because I guess he just keeps those in the kitchen. Away from them and runs out the house saying, don't don't fly the plane, don't fly the plane. Why is she blaming herself? Her dad is the pilot. Yeah, I know. She wanted to go to the... Be- like, what? How is that her fault? It didn't look like beach weather, by the way. No, it was like overcast and gray and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, were you going to the working coast? Honestly, if if she didn't drop the line that they were near a beach, I would have thought this was in like I don't know Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, or like, Maine, maybe. Oh, I was just naming states without a like beach. Oh, so this you're saying so this this plays in the same spot where our good friend gets hit by or slides out of a jeep and hits a tree, tree. and then we see Keanu Reeves come in, and all of a sudden we have a crossover episode of Play No Games. Yep, congratulations, we did it. Hey, better movie. He man, Skeletor, try to take over Toyland. Oh my goodness, <laughs> we're on to something now. <gasps> oh, we got a gold mine. Just we got a gold mine. He man goes to Toyland. Yes. Can you imagine Barnaby with He man running about? Could you imagine Barnaby trying to deal with being one upped by Skeletor? And then so, let's say Skeletor's <laughs> army comes through. Yes. And then now they're shooting the toy guns at them. You've got the you've got the like army marching forward and stuff. Wow. Yes. Wow. You've got the frog Sherlock Holmes running around me like, what's going on here? We got we got a movie. Hundred percent better movie, better cro- well. Then we got the dog coming from Arizona to save his girl in Toyland. <laughs> yes. We have Doodle Bop dancing around in the background. Please bring Doodle Bop into this. Got some Wendangos in the forest. We have a mo- Wow. We're just adding everything. And then all of a sudden you have Troy Bolton in the background doing some random dance. <laughs> yep. I don't know why that was the voice I went to, but you know what? And while we're at it, while we're at it, Alf ends up there somehow. Oh, he's off to the side <laughs> making some source. He would be on, uh, Alf would be on the wall with Humpty, making a smart out comment of some sort. And Humpty would never reply. Nope. Because, yeah. That, we, we just made a movie. 100%. Do you think, in, in this made up scenario, do you think that, that so Skeletor in this movie 
broke the fourth wall several times by talking to the audience. He looked right at the camera. Yes. Do you think Alf would also be breaking the fourth wall? Oh, and 100%. Our cross? Okay. 100%. Okay. Cool. Better movie. Better 100%. movie. Wow. Someone just made a million dollars off of us because now we're going <laughs> to release this. And <laughs> right. They just made the movie and now we're like, oh, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, take the money that you put towards Avatar Way of Water, put it towards this. Hey, you, you got yourself a free, awesome movie. A free, awesome <laughs> movie? It's just not even the fact that we're just going to put $2 billion out there on this movie. Free. Oh, my goodness. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Uh, final thoughts, saving graces? Final thoughts, saving graces. I think the saving grace is the fact that it's just He-Man. It's He-Man, Masters of the Universe, that has that title, that brand to it. Um, so it kind of gives you that, that retro aspect to it. That mm-hmm. you're kind of like, mm, if you're a He-Man fan, this is a, it's not that bad for what it could be. It could be a lot better, but it was definitely not that bad. It's watchable. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, I, I grew up watching um, really kind of odd like He-Man and Lone Star stuff, like growing up a little bit. And so seeing it in live action, it was kind of a treat. It's not great. It's, it's you know, serviceable. But for like a bad movie going in, it's fun. You're, you're going to have fun. Dolph Lundgren's trying his best. He's given a wooden performance. The whole thing's over MacGuffin, which, you know, there's things to say about that. But it's it's fun. It's fun. And watching the costumes, watching the sets, which actually aren't too bad when they're in, uh, you know, like near Castle Grey School and Skeletor's yeah. Place. Like, the sets are pretty cool. It is a movie that you could actually show kids, too. Yes. I don't think there's anything that was too too crazy out there. There's, there's, some, there's some hard swearing, but that's about it. Here and there. Not yeah. a lot. I think it's something that kids could definitely watch. I mean, it's pretty close to, like, a last Starfighter, Star Wars. I mean, if the kid... Uh, this is something I could see my parents eventually just let me watch as a kid. Yeah. You brought up uh, Last Starfighter is like a perfect like analogy for this. Yes. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's analogous to this. Same. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, we will see you next week. Uh, give us a follow on Instagram. Follow us. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Do you have any shout outs? Thanks for, for saying something for our audio um listeners so other than that we out oh you son of a <laughs>